Hey, 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 hey. H happy Saturday. How's it going? Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, first things first, uh, I don't have my glasses today. I left them in my car this morning, and uh, or our car, I should say, and my wife took the car, so <laughs> no glasses. Uh, I have a backup pair, but they're, I don't know, I, I they're a different prescription and from a long time ago, so I figured out go no glasses. So there will be extra squinting today. So, hey, happy Saturday. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Um, thank you so much for being here. One second. My autofocus is being weird. If it likes to focus on my microphone, which, which is fine, but then it just kind of looks weird. I think it still is, but hopefully that's okay. So welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for being here. If you're if you're new to the stream, thank you. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out on your Saturday to, to join me. Uh, if you're returning, thank you so much for coming again. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, today, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, no guests today. I, I have a couple of guests lined up. Not today. It'll be coming. Uh, I'll announce it on Discord, probably on Twitter too. Uh, but it's just going to be me. So what do we do when it's just me? We just talk about stuff we're interested in. We talk about tech. We talk about home lab stuff. We talk about networking storage all all the good things uh that we'd like to do uh um outside of uh maybe work or maybe at work so if you have something you want to share definitely throw it in the chat and let's uh let's talk about it um if you have any questions or anything that i or anyone from the community can answer definitely throw it in the chat and let, let's uh let's talk about it let's figure it out so uh so today saturday uh weather i'll, I'll start with weather I usually do uh weather in minnesota has been pretty good it's been pretty good like kind of upper 80s kind of muggy uh we've had some rain uh which is nice um and other than that it's been pretty okay uh i got a little bit of sun yesterday i went out on a boat i actually went outside <laughs> took a little lake uh lake cruise on lake minnetonka it was actually super nice uh so i feel like i got a little sun <laughs> probably a little bit too much on my neck but Anyways, I'm doing okay, and yeah, I forgot my glasses, so I'm not used to seeing myself without glasses, <laughs> especially on a stream. Anyways, um, what are you working on? Throw it in the chat. Let's talk about it, um, and then let's uh, let's uh, figure out what we're gonna talk about too. Um, so, like I mentioned, if you if you're new here, we just kind of go through chat, we talk about it uh, line by line. I'll try to keep I'll try to keep up with chat. I'll definitely try to keep up with chat. I, I received some feedback that it like looks like it's pre-recorded because I'm not like reading line for line as it comes in, but you know, uh, I, I try to give each each person's question some attention. So uh, I'll, I'll try to get to it and I'll try to figure out something out in the future. Like this stream has been evolving over time. I've tried to incorporate your feedback to make sure that you guys feel included and I'm gonna continue to do that. So what you see on the screen is live chat. What I pull up is chat in the past that uh, either needs some attention or, or we're gonna talk about it. So anyways, uh, before we get into what you've been working on, I'll talk about what I've been working on, just so I don't blab about it the whole entire stream. Um, this past week, uh, I've been working on a little bit of stuff with uh, with Kubernetes. So I, I went through this huge, like, for me it was huge, huge hardware upgrade. Upgraded my switch, uh, 48 port PoE, uh, then tested out some 10 gig stuff. 10 gig's working on my workstation here. This stream is actually connected at 10 gig back to my switch. So something goes wrong, it's something <laughs> with that nick. Every now and then when it boots up, I have this weird, like, weird timeout where I don't get an IP address for, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 seconds, which is odd. My onboard Nick didn't do that, so I don't know, something something to figure out in the future. Not today, though, because <laughs> I'm connected. And if you're seeing me, that means my 10 gig, gig connection back to my Switch is working. So anyways, I've been uh, been thinking a few things about, about Kubernetes. You know, I have these Docker-only hosts, and I have Kubernetes stuff, and sometimes the management of the two things is, is, is challenging for me. You know, I manage Docker one way, I manage Kubernetes another way, and it's, uh, it's challenging. So I've been working on a solution to kind of unify that, um, and uh, hopefully it works out okay. We'll see. <laughs> As you know, I've been using Flux to manage my, my, uh, my Kubernetes cluster via GitOps, Flux can manage multiple Kubernetes clusters, so I've been thinking about adding another cluster, even if it's a cluster of one, uh, and possibly replacing my Docker-only host. Uh, but I want to test some stuff out first because that's a lot. That's a big change, and it's a, a and it's a lot of work. And I want to know that it works first. So, been working on that and a couple other things uh, that I'll probably have out maybe this week, hopefully this week. So anyways, let's uh, let's uh, let's see what you guys were, are, are uh, working on. Um, first, let's let's look into events. There were a couple events uh, right before we started. So I generally I, I greatly not generally greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, let's start back. Uh, this one looks like it was right before the stream. Darth Mole, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. 
Uh, Manix, Manix, x86. Hey, thanks for the prime sub. Thank you so much. Tech address. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Maphne, resub, tier one, 21 months, 21 months straight. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. 21 months. It has gone by so fast. Here's the 21 more months. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, Maphne. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Glad you're here. Um, it's, it's Barden. I'm a uh, barn Don. It's Barden. That's what I'm going with. Has resub prime two months, two months straight, two months straight. That's gone quick. Yeah. Totally has. Hey, another, another sub coming in. I'll definitely get to it. Thank you so much. Uh, and then, uh, PC Geek cheered 100 bits. Uh, hype train. Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. How's it going? PC Geek. Good to see you. Uh, alpha computer, uh, 1776, 100 bits. Cheer 100 bits. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, I'm Mr. Hunter. Thanks for the follow. Hannah, A2002. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And Nam, Namuzi. Namuzi. I'm going with that. <laughs> Has a resub, tier one, six month. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, the resub. Thank you so much, tier one. Yakto, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Has, has subscribed Prime Sub. Thanks for spending your Prime Sub on me. How's it going, Yakto? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hopefully your third 48 U rack is uh, doing okay. This guy's got three 48 U racks. If you if you don't believe me, he showed it off on Discord last week and on Twitter earlier this week. So <laughs> lucky dog. <laughs> um, ding. Uh, let's see. Xavius D. Uh, Xavius D. Underscore. <laughs> Uh, how's it going? Uh, is resub tier one, eight months. Woot, Tim Khan <laughs> soon. How's it going, Xavius? I never noticed you had the underscore in Twitch. Maybe, maybe with my glasses, I'm seeing a little bit better. <laughs> how's it going, Xavius? Good to see you, man. Woo, Tim Khan. I, I wish, I, I wish I was better at organizing stuff. Maybe I can, or at least virtual. I kind of feel like we have a virtual one after the stream, which is a good call out to say like, hey, after the stream, if you, if you want to hang around and jump in voice chat, we always do. We always do it right after the stream. So definitely hang around, uh, get get Discord already set up, get an invite link, get in Discord now so that right after the stream, we can we can hop in there and hop in voice chat and just talk about all kinds of stuff. That's where I learned about Yakto's uh, uh, third 48U, 42U rack. And that's where I learned about all of the Xavier's D's awesome rack stuff and everyone else's. Um, let's see. Uh, wow, I'm catching up, catching up. Xavius, I called that one out. No, no, another one. Xavius, dude, thanks. 101 bits. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Uh, I'm Mr. Hunters has sub, prime sub. Thank you so much for spending a prime sub on me. Thank you. Your local IGP TV. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And Ox, I'm, on, I'm going with Ox Decade. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much, man. What a, what a gracious welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so let's, uh, well, Twitch has changed stuff again on their, on their chat. I like it. I like it. I, I can see a little bit more. Uh, anyways, uh, so let's get into, let's get into chat. Let's see what you're working on. Uh, as I mentioned, or may not have mentioned, we, we stick around roughly an hour. I started a couple minutes late. We'll stay a little bit late, but roughly an hour. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. Uh, and I also want to hop into voice chat and see what you guys are up to. Um, so you guys can share what you're working on. Uh, maybe even with video too. So we'll hop in there right afterwards. So let's see. Let's see who was first. I think I know. Hey, Maphne. Thank you. 100 bits. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm a mega man. He's he's getting some action today. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, first, let's answer who was here first. I think I know who was here first because I saw it. I saw it when I was getting rid of stream. Crack Kitty. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, that's who I see as first. It was at, at 2.30, so about a half hour before I started the stream. Thank you so much. And uh, Maphne then quickly follows up with, uh, he was there five hours ago, which I, I don't doubt, because Maphne, Maphne definitely hangs out all hours of the day, and he's on a different time zone. Like He's like six or seven hours ahead of the U.S., depending on which one you're in. So he's, uh, I never know what time Maphne's on. He's on Maphne time, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, let's get into chat. Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, Mongstad, uh, hey Tim, hope you're doing great. I, I am doing great. Good. Hey, Savius, <laughs> cheer 202 bits. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Also, thanks for thanks for waking up for the stream. I know you work third shift and uh, you work uh, different hours than a lot of us, uh, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I know that sometimes you say you were still sleeping and I'm kind of thrown off, but you work a different shift. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, let's see. Pizza Geek hype. Yeah, for sure. Zoid first. No, 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 no. Crack Kitty was first. Dude. 
Home Lab New, resub, tier one, 24 months, 20 months straight, dude. How's it going, Home Lab New? Two years, man. Let's go. A wonderful two years. Can't believe it's been this long. Thank you for everything you do, Tim. Yeah, no, thank thank you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> without without all you guys here, it, it, it wouldn't happen. So I thank you right back. Appreciate it, man. Two years, Home Lab New. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no route. Oh my god. 30 second ad. Yeah, I have no control over that. I have no control over that. That's 100% Twitch. If you click on my channel and you get a 30 second ad, I can't do anything about that. Uh, I've disabled ads for subscribers and that's all I can do. <laughs> that's the only control I have over ads on Twitch. And so I think they're testing some new stuff with browse, browsing and discoverability. It doesn't ha help if you land on my channel. Um, but they're doing some other stuff with ads that are pretty cool. Well, not cool because it's still ads, but giving people an opportunity to check out other people's channels without getting that ad first. But if I could turn it off, if I could turn off all ads, I totally would, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. There's no reason why someone should spend 30 seconds on an ad just to check out someone's channel. That's some of what uh, Twitch is addressing. What you're experiencing now is not something I can I can change. I would love to, but I can't. I, I wish I could 100% disable ads on Twitch, but... They got to make money <laughs> and they give me like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny of it, <laughs> which if I could, again, if I could turn off all ads, I would, but I can't. Uh, I loot, dude. Thank you so much. I loot. Give did five tier one subs. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. How's it going? I loot. I loot, dude. Thank you so much. If you guys don't know, I loot. Great guy. One of our mods along with PC Geek. Uh, he's been working on some awesome stuff for Docker, bootstrapping a whole entire uh, Docker host with all the goodies, batteries included. You should definitely check it out in our Discord. But dude, Ilu, thank you so much. Gifted uh, tier one sub to Bloodbright. Uh, B Peppel. B Peppel. I'm going with B Pepe. Pepe. Gamista. Uh, Rionis. Uh, I'm terrible at pronouncing uh, names. Re I'm going with Rionis, uh, Mighty Endeavor, and Will Swish7. Enjoy your gifted sub from Ilu. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, I loot. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Sigor. Uh, oh no, PC Geek. Uh, yeah, Crack Kitty was first city. All right, confirmed. Confirmed. All right, Sigor. Hi, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Yes, good to see you. Ezreal, guess who's back? Techno <laughs> Tim intensifies. I, I thought we were going for Shady's back, but <laughs> how's it going, Ezreal? Good to see you. Uh, back again. I guess we are going for the Shady's back. Back again. <laughs> uh, no route. I've been working on my talk for MCH next week. You should come. I don't know what MCH is. I feel like I should know what MCH is. Mm, I can't even get the M. I can't even get the M. Usually I'm good at guessing tech acronyms, at least a few words out of it. I can't guess it, but uh, I, if, if it were near and applicable and I didn't have work, I would love to, but I don't know what it is. I'll look it up after the stream for sure. And it, like I said, if it's near, applicable, I'd love to. I'd love to show up uh, to something local. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Zoid. Uh, dang, maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, it was Crack Kitty. It was Crack Kitty. Uh, Noomzy. Hey, 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 how's it going? Uh, Prieto. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll BH. Thanks for the sub, Prime Sub. Thank you so much. Thanks for the Prime Sub. Thanks for spending your Prime Sub on me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mongstad. Uh, any suggestion for great outdoor home security cameras? Plus. Plus, I, I guess the <laughs> security cameras plus. Plus what? Um, no. Um, so, um, so as you know, I, I may or may not know, I use Unify cameras, Protect ones. There are some great Unify Protect cameras that are outdoor that are great. I assume since you're asking here, you're asking about like self-hosted options or IP cameras that are uh, open, uh, which Unify ones are not. Um, I had great luck with Amcrest. Um, Amcrest and uh, Dawa, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I don't even know if they sell them anymore, uh, but I had some POE outdoor um, vandal proof ones, uh, dome ones uh, by Dawa. It's like D A U H U A. Um, and then I had an Amcrest one that was super good before I switched over to Unify. Those are great. I'm sure other people have other suggestions, but those are. Those are pretty good. They're weather resistant. Um, they had uh, night vision. Uh, they were 1080p, you know, 24 frames per second. Um, worked out great, POE. Um, but I, I, Amcrest worked out good for me too. Those are the two that I that I had in my environment before I switched to Unify Protect. Uh, Crack Kitty seems good, all right. 
Uh, oh, that's a good suggestion. So Noom, uh, Noomzy says, no, I'm going with Nam, Namui. <laughs> I should know this by now. I'm going with Nam. So Nam says, uh, Yuffie stuff. Yeah, Yuffie stuff is great. Yuffie, you anchor or anchor, however you pronounce it, anchor bought Yuffie, right? Because I have Yuffie vacuum and I think it's, it's, uh, owned by anchor, but yeah, good call. Good call out too. I, I, I think they're, they're basic. They support basic IP cameras too. Uh, with an RMTP stream. So if you use Blue Iris or anything else, I think you can tap into that too. Uh, moin. I don't know what moin means, NSG Panda. Moin. <laughs> moin. Moin. I'm going with moin. <laughs> uh, PC Geek, let's see. Uh, trying to put Debian Cloud Init VMs directly onto an SSD, but so far it didn't work. Uh, no issues cloning with Clonezilla, but the SSD, but. To the SSD, it hangs on boot, so something else is going on under the hood uh, to boot from a cloud init VM that I have to figure out. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. You would think that cloud init just just bootstraps right up. I mean, you probably check this. I would just say, you know, check the controller that they're using, either Vert IO or whatever your SATA controller or SAS controller, your virtual one is that you're using. Check that out. But I'm sure you looked at that too. And then, um, yeah, that's that's what I would do first. That's probably what I would do first, but it should be using Vert IO, I think, if it's uh, if it's uh, cloud in it. So uh, you might want to look at that. But that's tough. That's going to be a tough one to track down. <laughs> it's it's either going to be one checkbox or it's going to be a day of trying to figure it out. <laughs> Mr. Monsoon, let's go. How's it going, man? Good to see you, Mr. Monsoon. How you doing? Uh, Piece of geek, your camera is a little fuzzy. Hopefully, I fix that because uh, yeah, like I said, uh, the, my camera's trying to. Autofocus on this, and I, uh, yeah, I, I adjusted the autofocus. Hopefully, it's a little bit better. Uh, Blood Blight, time to use a really small font. No, no, not at all. Like, uh, really small font is like what I'm looking at right now uh, for chat comments. So, it's <laughs> gonna be a lot of squinting. There's gonna be a lot of squinting. No glasses today. Uh, Sigor says, uh, uniform, uniform cameras uh, if you already have the, yeah, unify cameras if you already have the Dream Machine Pro or similar. Yeah, that's that's what I have. I, I agree. <laughs> uniform is probably autocorrect, but uh, or either that or it's autotype. Sometimes I autotype words. <laughs> there are a few words that I autotype that just in my head, I automatically think, yep, in my brain, my fingers fill out the rest. Whenever I type win, it ends with does, no matter what it is, even if it's a single window or winning or something, my brain just says type windows. <laughs> Same with, uh, what's the other one I always do? It's, uh, is it raid? Yeah, anytime I type, no, is it raid? I don't remember. There's some word that I always type and I'm like, oh man, they can tell I've played RPGs before because I always accidentally type the, 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 the wrong word because my brain is so used to typing it. Anyways, uh, I totally agree. Like Unify ones, most of them, uh, they have you know a, a, a weather resistant line that are outdoor, that are rated for outdoor, that work out fine. But there are other ones that you know are just plain poe that are that are open that do too. Uh, but yeah, Dream Machine uh, Pro has a lot of good ones. Uh, he's missing his glasses. I am. I am. I totally. I'm glad you noticed, but uh, it's kind of tough. My eyes are probably going to turn really red really fast, and I'll be squinting a lot. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it does okay. Especially with this light here, I think I think usually my glasses like kind of reflect some of that light. I don't know, but the light seems extra bright today. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, I have no idea what that is. As you can say, oh yeah, terms and conditions apply. <laughs> I like it. I like it. How did you get that really small font? I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, the camera's not in focus. It's your eyes. Hello. Yeah, it is. It might have been. It might have been. I. I. I it's you. Know, I both. <laughs> <laughs> um 18 wheeled ray i'm watching from the road <laughs> what don't watch from the road i hope you mean you're a passenger in the car if, you, if, if you're driving please don't watch <laughs> yeah i agree up a sharp pull over man yeah 18 wheeled ray pull over if you're if you're watching or put it audio only or just catch it later catch it later you can catch it later when when i'm not live so <laughs> uh let's see uh let's go nathan nathan color uh, does anyone have any recommendation for a small form factor unit for pie hole? I wanted to use pie, uh, but they jacked up the price. Yeah, that's tough. It's going to be tough. <laughs> if you want a small, you know, unit for pie hole, usually use Raspberry Pi is the way to go. Even a Pi Zero. I, I mean, uh, you could even use an older pie uh, because because uh, pie hole doesn't take a lot. It does not take a lot at all. It stores all of its uh, DNS entries. It caches them in RAM. And even two gigs of RAM is plenty. 
Uh, so it doesn't take much. So if you can find any pi, uh, whether it's uh, uh, pi zero, pi two, pi three, b, four, whatever, it should work fine. Uh, but I know pies are hard to find. Um, it, in there, the, the prices are definitely jacked up. Uh, I've seen prices kind of get a little bit closer. I mean, but some people are still paying, you know, 20 over retail, which it's kind of like, well, if you want it now, that's the price for convenience. It sucks, but, <laughs> but, uh, not the crazy, like 300, I think I was seeing like a week or two ago, which is like, what? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good suggestion. And I think, uh, PC Geek has another good suggestion. Chrome boxes are pretty cheap and can be hacked to run plain Linux. Yeah. He told me about this last week and I checked it out. Yeah. Chrome boxes, uh, look, look pretty fantastic. Uh, it's an alternative to a pie. Uh, if you're looking for just some low power compute. Chromeboxes work fine. I think they have a Celeron processor too. So they're not ARM, which is fine with me for a lot of my workloads. I mean, that's something you'll have to consider. If you needed ARM, it might not be the greatest, you know, one-to-one -one replacement. Uh, but if it's if it's uh if you don't care about the processor architecture, Celeron is totally fine and more than capable and low power too. I mean, I would I would love to do that on some of my, you know, my my uh, Raspberry Pis that I don't really care about the CPU architecture. I more care about it being compatible with Kubernetes and my workloads and whatever I'm working and most stuff works with x86. So yeah, great alternative to it. I saw that uh, when he linked it to me, I think it was earlier in the week and I was like, this is pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome. Oh, uh, let's see, uh, um, I'm going with no Nam. I'm going with Nam until you tell me different. Nam, uh, hey Techno Tim, big thanks for all your content, no problem. Working through your home lab videos and learning a lot with my home lab has landed me my first pure software job as a deployment engineer. Thanks so much. That is awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, deployment engineer. So that, that's probably a lot of DevOps stuff that you're learning about. Um, how to, uh, you know, build, maybe not build, but maybe build and deploy, you know, your applications and services to your infrastructure. Awesome. That's, I love doing that. Glad you got the job. Uh, it's all because of you. I mean, I, I can you can put all the content you want out in the world, but someone still needs to be able to consume it, understand it, and do it, <laughs> and then prove they know it. So it's all you, all you. Uh, so, I, man, congratulations. That's awesome. Taserbot. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. That looks like Taserbot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, let's see. What are the plus and minuses of UDM Pro, VPN, firewall, etc.? Oh, yeah. Good question. Um... So what are the pros and cons of UDM Pro Firewall? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with VPN. Uh, I assume that's what you're asking. Um, right now, they're in limbo. They're definitely in limbo. Uh, so they support uh, 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 IPsec. Uh, they don't support SSL VPN, uh, um, but they support, uh, uh, L, I forget what it is, IPsec and site-to-site uh, -site VPN on their older style of VPN. Now they've rebranded this newer style of VPN and they call it Teleport, odd name. I think it's a great name, but it's kind of confusing with the, the other product called Teleport, which it's not. Real quick, uh, Archimedes, uh, A3000, thanks for the resub. Prime, five months, one month streak. Thank you so much, Archimedes. Thank you, A3000. All right, Ice Gold Andre 3000, I like it. <laughs> um, but so, so then UDM has this new thing, they're branding, calling it Teleport, which is their really easy way to connect over VPN. Right now, it just supports WireGuard, and right now, it just supports mobile devices. You can't even do it on a Mac. They say coming soon on a Mac, and you can't do it on Windows, and they don't say coming soon on Windows. So, so um, they're developing this, this, this easier way to connect for VPN. I heard from Mac Telecom Networks that it will support both SSL VPN, so OpenVPN, as well as WireGuard, which, is, which I hope that's what they do. Um, so, long story short, there are a lot of cons, but the older way of connecting to VPN, I think it's L2, it's IPsec, connecting that way uh, totally works. And that's how I've been doing it for a while. Um, but uh, on my mobile devices now, I'm using the, the WireGuard or their, their branded uh, Teleport uh, VPN uh, to, to, to access my network. But again, only on you know Mac, uh, iOS and Android, coming soon on Mac, who knows on Windows, and it still doesn't support OpenVPN. So... Those are a lot of cons, um, but the future I think is bright because they, they're developing this. I mean, the, the, it's right there in the UDM Pro now um, and uh, they're continuing to develop it and they've enhanced their Wi-Fi Man app. That's their app to measure wireless. They've enhanced that app to also be able to connect to your home uh, through, through WireGuard. So pretty cool. They're doing some cool stuff. 
Um, people think they're moving slow. I think they're moving pretty fast because it seems like I have a new update for my UDM Pro weekly, which is totally fine with me. Totally fine with me. Just don't break anything. <laughs> Even if you do, I, I, I'll probably still uh, be okay with it because, I mean, sometimes progress hurts. <laughs> Move fast and break stuff, right? Uh, except for my UDM. Uh, let's see. Nathan, color. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, no problem. We were talking about the devices there. Hey, everyone. Blade WR. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Mr. Hunter. <laughs> I love you, man. Love you too, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. TD5150. Uh, thinking about buying a UDM Pro? I think it's, uh, I, I, I know it gets a lot of flack. I think for, you know, 300 and some dollars, it's a, it's a fantastic device. I, I know it's a little bit pricier than a lot of stuff, but it's definitely more pricier than free. But even if you're going to spin up a free, you know, uh, firewall or appliance, you still got to have hardware to put it on. Most likely that hardware is going to cost more than 350 unless you virtualize it and roll it into there. I don't know. I think it's a great device because it helps me manage a lot of stuff in one place, uh, especially you know, firmware, cameras, updates, VLANs, all in one place. It's it's kind of nice. Power cycle, all my ports on all of my uh, devices when they hang right from one console. It's it's kind of great. Uh, Sigor, uh, I just bought some uh, Aquara, Aquara, I'm going with Aquara, uh, Zigbee sensor to monitor leaks and fridge and freezer temps. Nice. Still waiting on the Zigbee gateway to arrive, but hopefully... I'll get it all set up uh, next week. Awesome. Yeah, that's something I haven't done yet that I'm I'm, I'm so so ready to get set up is, is water leak uh, uh, detection. Um, because I've had uh, a leak before on some, uh, like under my sink, I've had a leak. Uh, not, you know, unbeknownst to me, it, it was the kind of leak that's, you know, a couple drips an hour to where you don't know until the day you clean out the thing and you're like, whoa, it's been leaking down here for a while. I had that happen before uh, and it sucks and I'd like to know sooner because that wood gets all gross. Um, and then it's, I, I'm always scared that something, you know, is going to leak in the basement. Most of my stuff is lifted up at least three, four inches, but still like I don't want something to leak. And so I'd love to be able to tap into that and know when something is leaking. So anyways, that's a lot about leaking, but I'm, I'm interested in leaking for sure. <laughs> As we all are. <laughs> this is getting weird. Uh, Bloodlight, uh, do any of the Docker software defined storage platforms support erasure encoding yet? I don't even know what that is. Um, I don't even know what the software defined storage platforms uh, for Docker is. I, 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 I'm assuming you mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I haven't tapped into this. I need to read a little bit about it. Um, I don't know. That's uh, throw it into Discord at some point. And let's talk about it, and it will remind me to do some research on what it actually is and what it means. <laughs> you got me there. Uh, Beppo, oh, here we go. Uh, B Papel Gomista. Uh, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Sounded like I knew what I was saying, but it's probably totally wrong. Hi, Tim. Nice to see you again. Have you ever tried uh, Casa OS, uh, an easy container environment? In my honest in my honest opinion, it's very nice. New proof. No, I I haven't tried it yet. I've heard of it. Uh, I you know it's a container OS. It's I think it's meant to be just uh, kind of like an all-in-one where you get to pick and choose your containers and spin them up. But it's a whole entire operating system, so it basically creates almost like an appliance for you. Where you can spin up containers. I haven't done it. Seems cool. Uh, I'll have to check it out at some point. Thanks for a reminder on things to check out. <laughs> More rabbit holes to go down. I'm fine with that. Uh, Mini Pie Gaming has subscribed tier one thank you so much appreciate it thank you thank you uh pc geek sigor nice uh those akara things are great and work well with zigbee and uh, zigbee to mqtt nice yeah i gotta check into it. i i gotta look into them uh, yeah i've been rethinking a lot of my 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 home automation stuff i had a slight problem with with home kit and uh you know, home bridge the last three days, it's kind of, kind of driving me crazy. Uh, and I'm starting to think like, maybe, maybe I, I should do something else, but <laughs> I just hesitate to rip out a lot of my devices because a lot of my devices are older and they're still manageable. So I don't know, maybe, maybe back to home assistant. We'll see. Uh, um, oh, I can't read this, but I'm going to try a uh, mnemonic man. Mnemonic man. I'm going with mnemonic man without a U. Uh, <laughs> was working on getting a thin client to PC working uh, as OpenSense router. Nice. Yeah, sounds like a good use case for it. Uh, works okay, but not enough for sustained gigabit Ethernet. Yeah, good call. That's that's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah, unless it can do like AES, if it has the AES instruction natively on that CPU, it's going to be tough because if not, it'll do it in software. 
And then if you're doing any kind of IPS or IDS, you know, it's, it's gonna, you know, use obviously software and your CPU to do that. Um, could be tough. Um, but if you're getting close to gigabit, if you're getting close, I know you're paying for gigabit, but if you're getting close, I, I would call it good enough. Uh, and I know then you're not getting what you pay for, but at the same time, how, how, how often do you use full gigabit for more than like uh, internet <laughs> for more than, you know, a minute or two, you know, it's usually in bursts. So I could be wrong. I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but if you're close, I would say I would call it good enough. Uh, but then again, you're not getting internet you're paying for. So, <laughs> uh, the connection delay could be STP. Uh, don't, uh, hopefully I don't have a connection delay. We'll see. Uh, PC Geek, I've already, uh, this is Sigor. Uh, I've already got my home assistant docker set up just waiting for the hardware to arrive. Yeah, oh, you're all ready, all ready. Apishar, uh, I would recommend you set both of your NIC and switch ports from auto detect to 10 gig. Yeah, uh, I, I, I will check again. I thought I had that set up because it wouldn't work otherwise, uh, but I'll check again. Check again, good, good, uh, good call out there. LAWR, uh, setting up XCP and G on the spare machine just to try it out. Awesome. Yeah, I should do that again sometime. It's been years since I've tried to X XCP and G. I should give it a shot again, too, even as a nested hypervisor or nested virtualization within my Proxmox just to just see what's going on to keep my finger on the pulse. So, yeah, awesome. Awesome. Sounds like a good sounds like a good Saturday. Uh, I, I think I prefer Proxmox. Yeah, to each his own for sure. For sure. Uh, XCP isn't bad. I totally agree. I totally agree. They're both, they're both great hypervisors. Uh, Zoid. Uh, hey Tim, is it possible to use an ingress controller to serve traffic not on the cluster? Maybe, maybe using an external name type service. Is it possible to use an ingress controller to serve traffic not on the cluster? Uh, well, well, I, I, it might be, it might be, but with Kubernetes, you kind of have to, I mean, Kubernetes ex is expecting you to provide an ingress controller. Some distributions of Kubernetes provide one for you, but I think you have to have one in your cluster so that when you create ingresses, um, ingressy, ingresses, I don't know, how, what's plural of ingresses? I'm going with ingresses. <laughs> um, so that Kubernetes can get those instructions to actually then create that object within Kubernetes. It's, uh, it might sound complicated, but you know, Kubernetes doesn't ship with an ingress controller. You have to provide one. And really all that's doing is then telling Kubernetes to create that object for you. So I don't know if you can get around not providing an ingress controller. Otherwise you would have to do a lot of port mapping from nodes or cluster IPs, which sounds super complicated. That's not to say that you couldn't stand one up an ingress controller uh, inside but still have a reverse proxy outside uh, to front all of your traffic to then send it to that ingress controller for that ingress controller to actually work inside of Kubernetes to map, to route that traffic to those services and deployments. That's not to say you couldn't do that. I, I think you do, uh, unless you wanna do some super fancy networking uh, or expose each service directly with a load balancer, possibly. <laughs> it's been a while, but I i, I mean, uh, I always install an ingress controller in Kubernetes because I want, you know, I want my workloads to be able to say, hey, create a route, create an ingress, you know, map this service to this ingress controller and route this traffic properly. Might be possible, but I've never done it. Uh, Apershar, uh, I also tech my NIC, test my NIC before uh, and running with iPerf after doing the static thing. Good call. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've tested all that when I went to 10 gig last week. I uh, Maybe I'll verify. I just noticed when I reboot, though, I feel like it. I feel like something's different. I mean, it's definitely different, but I feel like there's something misconfigured. And I'll, I'll check one more time to make sure uh, the, the my NIC on my Windows device is hard-coded uh, to 10 gig and that my switch is hard-coded to 10 gig. Uh, cause there is a weird like time period where it doesn't seem like it's negotiating anything at all. Uh, Blade WR, uh, yeah, I just wanted to see what it was all about. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I could have done it in a VM, I guess, but I had Dell mini PC, so I'm not using it at the moment. So I thought I'd set it up on that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Xavius, I finally got my triple monitor mount set up. All right. So triple, are you going three wide? I bet three wide. Are you going three tall? I bet it's three wide. I bet it's three wide. I have an odd set up here. I have 
three wide, but two are in portrait over here and one's in, in landscape mode. Uh, but interesting. Yeah, uh, let me know how that works out. I've considered it. I have three individual arms. I probably should have got a triple monitor mount, but I need to adjust heights individually sometimes and swivel them uh, independently. And then I want to be able to make them wider if possible. Maybe I, maybe I could have got it by on a triple monitor mount and I could have cut down on, on half the gadgets I have connected to my desk. But you have to you have to take a picture and show me it for sure because I'd love to see it. Um, uh, seems good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm Mr. Hunter. I'm finishing up my self-hosted blog. Check it out. Uh, slash about. I mentioned your community. Thank you. Yeah, definitely check it out. Links aren't allowed, but it'll still let it through. But toss it into Discord and community community projects. Let's see it. Uh, Xavius, I was off last night, but worked on my desk setup. Uh, got to mount the wire management today. Awesome. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Mathney, I have proof in Discord that I was the first. All right, I'll have to look. Is it in random? Probably in random. Probably in random. I'm betting in random. Let's see, because I see you mentioned there. Uh, Alfie Tross, uh, did you hear about the server technician who kept zoning out on the job? He first got fired for having his head in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love it. Keep them coming. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, at first, yeah, I uh, I think there's another joke there about clouds. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's over my head. <laughs> uh, let's see. Xavius, uh, I also pulled in Crack Kitty to purchase the four 8 gig 100. Oh, man. A lot of, lot of, lot of numbers there. Uh, let's see. Four 8 gig uh, 128R dims for my new R22. It uses 12,800 E um, unbuffered ECC. Now I got to hunt down a pink unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, pink on top of it too. As if a unicorn wasn't hard enough to find. Now you got to find a pink one. I, I know what you mean, especially with part numbers uh, and compatibility. Oh man, that stinks. That stinks. I usually buy all my RAM mostly all at once because uh, if not, it's so hard to match stuff up later. And who knows if they're going to discontinue it in two years. That stinks. That stinks. I bet you'll find it, though. I bet you'll find it. Uh, let's see. Uh, no route. Uh, MCH equals May Katane Hackers. Hacker camp in the Netherlands. Not very local. No, not at all. Not at all. I like the name that they're May Contain Hackers. I like it. MCH. May Contain Hackers. I like it. That's I, I like it. It's, uh, it's kind of passive. <laughs> I like it. Sounds like It sounds like a Minnesota conference for sure. Uh, not very local. Uh, if I if I I'm, I'm in the Netherlands around that time, I will definitely stop in. But I don't see myself going there. I would love to. I would love to. I just haven't had any opportunities. Uh, uh, just Google MCH twenty twenty two. I got I got to look at it. Home Lab New. Anyone going to DefCon next month? Yeah, that, that's been coming up a little bit in Discord too. I'm not. Uh, I've been asked if I were going. Um, not at the moment. I uh, don't have any plans. I, I'd love to go sometime. I, I've never been. I've never been. It'd be cool to check out for sure. I've been to tons of developer con conferences, tons of infrastructure conferences, older infrastructure conferences, like a lot of Microsoft ones. Never been to a security uh, focused one. No route. Would love to someday. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, watch out for the cheap Chinese ones that spy on you though. Oh, this isn't related to cameras. Yeah, I, that might be a thing. I don't know. I, I've, I've, got cheaper ones that were were made in china and I, I don't think they were spying on me but as you know a protective measure what i do uh and you should probably all do too if you have cameras put your cameras on a vlan that doesn't have internet access another good reason to have vlans uh is is for exactly that so i have a vlan dedicated to cameras and on that vlan nothing goes out absolutely nothing and they can only can communicate with my controller which is unify but it could be blue eyes could be anything at all so that whole entire vlan zero internet access zero dns they can't they can't do anything except for get back to the controller so i mean that's one way to to to, to, to mitigate something like that if that were to happen regardless of brand or country or anything uh if 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 any of those cam cameras were ever compromised or there was some back door possibly in the future to any camera Protect yourself by putting them on a camera VLAN. Don't put anything else on the camera VLAN. It's not your IoT VLAN. It's even more sensitive than that. Only put cameras there. And then on that camera VLAN, block anything outgoing. 
anything incoming, obviously, you're behind an ad anyway, so it won't let you. But anything coming into that VLAN, anything going out to that VLAN, do not allow it. Block internet access, only allow it to your controller. And then you'll maybe sleep better at night. I don't know. But that's what I do. That's what I do. So that, that will help. That will help. Uh, but yeah, you, you should still try to buy cameras from companies you trust. And that's not to say that cameras from a certain geographic location shouldn't be trusted. It's just that buy brands you, you trust. And, and But at the same time, don't trust them as much as giving them internet access either. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting off my soapbox on uh, on how to protect your VLANs. Uh, NAM. I don't know what NAM is. Uh, let's see. Uh, got to contribute to the Chinese botnet. Please don't. No botnets at all. You don't, you don't want to contribute to any botnet, <laughs> uh, regardless of, of, uh, of, of, of geographic location. Uh, moin means hi. All right. I like it. Moin. What language? Uh, what language? Uh, I like it. Because I thought you were trying to say morning. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I understand morning. <laughs> That's uh, so I would say good morning <laughs> in the south. Uh, Tidar, Tardar, Tardar, let's go. Uh, and hi, Tim. I set up a Kubernetes cluster with Rancher, but I never got the Let's Encrypt stuff working. Eh, it's it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. Uh, depends on how you want to set it up. Um, that's yeah there's a lot going on there there's a lot going on there um you know if if you're going to do kubernetes and then you're going to install rancher on top and then you're going to install an ingress controller like we talked about earlier possibly choosing traffic which i think is a good fit um then on top of that you have a choice on how you want to terminate your 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 certificates um and how you want to generate them you probably want to do that with let's encrypt then you have options. Do you want to store it in local storage or do you want to store it in <laughs> yet another system of cert manager? Um, I've been doing the cert manager way. It's, 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 it's pretty far down the rabbit hole, but once you get it, it's great, but, um, it's tough. If, if you have a specific step you're, you're stuck at, throw it in discord and, uh, let's talk about it. I, I do have documentation on how to set it up. Uh, the, the, persistent disk way so using a pvc i don't have instructions on setting it up yet on on uh, with cert manager i probably should i'm getting ready to revamp a few things in in kubernetes here soon so maybe maybe i'll toss that in there but uh yeah but 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 don't focus on what you don't have focus on what you do have i mean you have a kubernetes cluster up and running along with rancher that's that's pretty awesome and that's a lot of work and that's there are a lot of landmines in there and a lot of places you can you can uh, go down the wrong path. So that's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Xavius, uh, I found a listing for 17 Samsung Evo 850, 500 gig SSDs, putting them in my Dell R uh, 1220. I think you meant 220 DAS, or maybe you meant 1220, and setting up a 12 terabyte SSD array in TrueNAS. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Too bad they aren't one gig, but yeah, that's awesome. I I also noticed like a lot of uh, SSD storage was on sale, and, and it, there weren't Prime Day sales. Uh, a lot of the prices have been cut, especially with Samsung. I I, I almost considered getting uh, some Evo. I think 870s, four terabytes. They were 150 dollars off the other day. I was like, oh man, is today the day that I pull the trigger on eight of these? And then I was like, mm, eight times 350 dollars, probably not gonna do it. <laughs> Uh, but but prices it was a good sign that prices are coming down and it wasn't even a prime day sale it was just the price they were on sale maybe they're on sale during prime day but it wasn't a prime day deal so they're probably still on sale now maybe but ssd prices coming down i like it but yeah go for it go for an ssd i i mean it depends on you know I, so 17 of them uh i did you say how much they were a piece it depends on how much they were are a piece you know if they're if they're like 50 bucks Maybe no, they would have to be less than fifty bucks, I think, because I don't know how much they are new. Uh, it just depends. Just depends what you want to do with that. But if you did do that, and you put them in a you know a storage array, then you could have your VM storage in there. I mean, that's that's fast enough as long as you have a fast enough connection. You know, going back, um, SFP probably 10, probably twenty gig or maybe forty. <laughs> get a lag going on those because um, the more VMs you have, the more bandwidth you'll need. But sounds awesome. Or you could do it for science, but that'd be a pretty expensive science experiment, though, too. Um, anyone notice the video is slightly behind the audio? I hope not. I hope not, because I'm looking at all my gauges. They all look good. Sometimes you just need to refresh, so give that a shot. 
Uh, refresh your page. Uh, it's not the controller type. The boot partitions are fat, so I don't know what is up with that. Uh, gonna work on the copy and see if I can figure it out. My gut is saying that the root partition location is being hard coded in the boot config. Oh, so this is in regards to your getting your Debian uh, Cloud Init uh, image working. Oh man, you are pretty far down the rabbit hole. I was right. <laughs> Uh, it's in sync for me. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it depends on your browser and when you joined and Twitch, just a refresh usually helps, helps. If you're on a mobile device, force close the app and open it back up. Home lab new. Wonder if it's an issue with the M1 max decode video and audio. Could be that too. Could be that too. And depends on the browser. Uh, yeah, could be that for sure. Uh, pause. Yeah, you guys are, you guys got it. You guys got it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I always do the audio type LS and CD and control plus L. Oh, I, I don't know those commands. Taser. Uh, I sent some friends some weird Linux commands because I thought it was focused on the terminal. What? I've sent friends some weird Linux commands because I thought I was focused on the terminal. Oh, I know what you mean. I've done that too. I've done that too. Uh, you think you're in the terminal and you're in chat and you're doing one thing and you pay something and you send it. Yeah, I, I've sent Linux commands to chat all the time and people are like, what? I've accidentally sent them in text messages before too. Sent to my wife once because <laughs> I was at work and I was using iMessenger on my Mac and I was doing some stuff. She texted me and I texted to her and then, and then she was like, uh, I don't think I'm nerdy enough to know what this means. And then, so I, I didn't say anything for a long time purposely to see what she said. And I didn't tell her it was an accident. <laughs> she was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, and then I, I waited. I waited to see what her response was. But I've done that. I've been there many times. Uh, with Twitch, there's an audio video issue. Closing out and jump back in normally fixes. I totally agree. Thank you for the help so much. Uh, Zero, Zeraki. Uh, I watched your SSL on everything video, but I just don't get the part. How can I use it on external IPs? Please. Um, hmm. Let's see. Um... I'm trying to understand what you mean. So I assume you want to go to your reverse proxy, provide SSL, and then have your reverse proxy, the back end, uh, be another IP or another machine. And that should be just as simple as creating a route for it. Um, it. You don't need labels or you don't need anything like that. I mean, unless you're using labels, but you should be able to do that in the traffic config where you configure your routes. Uh, you define the service and then you define your route and then your route will be that external IP of that machine that's behind it. Uh, for example, I put the reverse proxy in front of my IPMI, which obviously, you know, has a self-signed certificate, uh, but I point to the IP just in case DNS is down because that IP is not changing and I do exactly that. So there are examples of how to do this uh, in, in uh, I think, my Launchpad repo. Uh, there's a traffic config that's in there and even in my docs points to there. And you can find it there. And there's examples on how to do it on a lot of different services. Most of them are exactly the same. Sometimes you need some additional headers, but there should be examples like that. All of those, uh, in those routes, when you see those DNS names, you don't have to use a DNS name. You can swap that out with an IP address. Totally fine. Uh, I typically use DNS. For some things, I still fall back on the IP address just in case DNS is down, which it shouldn't be. But in the case where I'm going to my IPMI, Sometimes it could mean that DNS is down. So that's one of the few things where I point it directly in an IP. One, because it's not going to change. And two, because like, hey, if I'm going in IPMI, uh, I'm usually have some problems. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I, Mr. Hunter, uh, how where do I share my updates? You just did right in here, right in here. Share them here. That'd be awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, for 100 days of home lab. Okay, yeah. So that there you go. So yeah, if you want to share your updates for 100 days of home lab, I must have missed that part of it. Yeah, you could share them anywhere. You can share them here if you want. Uh, you can share them in any place on social media. Uh, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with sharing on social media, you don't even have to share there. We have a, a whole entire channel dedicated to 100 days of home lab where people are sharing their updates. A lot of people are creating threads to do it so they can keep track of their own progress over time. Um, and some people are just sharing it in the channel. Thread is actually kind of nice because you can see what you did yesterday, the day before going all the way back to one, but then they're not that discoverable. So I, I still think I need to find a solve for that. Maybe it's a quick command to join all threads and leave all threads or something. That sounds dangerous, but join all threads is something I think the mods, uh, hinted at, I think a couple of weeks ago that I should probably look at because, um, as much as I, I like threads for organization, I don't like them for discovery because when you land in that channel, you're like, there's nothing going on in here. 
but then they're behind like uh you know we probably have 20 30 threads of people doing the 100 days of home lab there but yeah he's a geek's got you in the right direction sigor uh pie hole on a machine you already have ie docker yeah something that you're already running great call great call yeah why not consolidate all of that good call sigor uh, so this is going back to the comment of, hey, uh, like, I can't buy a Raspberry Pi right now. Does anybody know of a, 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 a an affordable machine that I could use for Pi Hole specifically? And Sigor says, hey, do it on a machine you already own. Do it in Docker. And there you go. Yeah, great, great, great call out. Uh, new Keith, uh, I use a tiny PC, great alternative to a Pi. Yeah, tiny micro. Yeah, totally agree. Tiny micros are, are great. The Lenovo ones, and I think there's a couple of other brands uh, that fall into there. But yeah, it's awesome. PC Geek, uh, Intel Celeron. All right, got it. Uh, Think Clients are good too. Yeah, good call. Those are those are two. Excuse me. Uh, Liggity Split It. How's it going, man? Uh, late to the party, but hanging out in Indianapolis. All right, Indianapolis. You're in the Hoosier state. Uh, I'm from Indiana originally, so <laughs> I know Indianapolis. So, hey, welcome welcome to the Hoosier state. <laughs> uh, PC Geek, uh, looked up uh, Mr. Chromebox. Mr. Chromebox um, online has tutorials on how to install aftermarket OS. Awesome. I think that's what you sent me. That's awesome. It's actually interesting. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, let's see. Blade. Uh, I need another box for another nut server host. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, Unified cost. Con. I thought you meant cost. Uh, dollar, dollar, dollar. Three dollars. So in in uh, in <laughs> Yelp speak, that's that's kind of expensive. <laughs> you know how they do the dollar signs. But yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, one, you're paying new. Two, you're paying for a lot of their software and services. And three, you know, yeah, I think you're paying for some of their development too. And so, I mean, any company that you you buy from, you're you're kind of investing in their future, and uh, not justifying the cost, but it de- depends on the device. I think they take a loss lead on some of their stuff, a loss leader, like uh, their APs. They know, like, hey, we can take loss on their APs because if we sell them an AP, we might be able to sell them a switch and a UDM and we'll make our money back. So <laughs> some of the things are cheap and same with their cameras. You know, th- those wireless cameras, I bought one of them, uh, 29 bucks. I mean, they're competing with Wise when you know they're make- they're taking a loss on them. So it just depends on the hardware. I do think they have some loss leaders in there like the Wise cameras and some of their APs because they gotta be more expensive than, than what they're charging. But again, they're trying to get you into the ecosystem, which I think personally is, is pretty awesome. PC Geek, uh, yeah, four USB ports on them, at least as well. Nice, on this Chrome box, got to check it out. Claude P, hello, how's it going? Archimedes. <laughs> Archimedes was the first computer I used back in 1992. Oh, <laughs> awesome, awesome. I don't even, I, I, I don't know anything about Archimedes' computer. I know about a Commodore 64, <laughs> but uh, that was my first computer that I, that I used. Well, it wasn't the first one they used. Apple IIe was the first that I used. Commodore was the first that I owned, even though Commodore was, when I owned it, it was really old. Um, and uh, most people had PCs, but I found one at a garage sale. My dad did, and we had a Commodore, and it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, have I ever tried TailScale? And thoughts of uh, on future product? Uh, have I tried it? Yeah, I have. Uh, I've tried it before. You know, it's VPN. It's basically making WireGuard, I think, really easy. Um I don't know the future of the product. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, they're making uh, VPN connections and tunneling really easy, and I think people want that. And you know, that's one of my gripes. I think uh, for a while on on WireGuard, the tech is great, but uh, the UX or user experience is is not the greatest uh, unless you automate all of that. But you know, imagine trying to tell your friends and family how to connect on WireGuard. Kind of tough, you know. Kind of tough unless you walk them through that. So things like TailScale, where they're making you know making it integrated and making it easy to connect to di- two different places you know i think have a have a pretty good future <laughs> as long as they keep doing the right stuff uh let's see uh cloud p i just switched to WireGuard just because it's nicer shame on me <laughs> because it's nicer well define nicer now i it, it connects really fast and it has no problems it i yeah so i yeah some of my reasons why i i use is you know connects really fast um it, it it handles connecting locally really well, which if you use OpenVPN or other VPN solutions, like they kind of freak out like when you then join the network that you were connected to from VPN. Uh, for example, you connect to WireGuard, 
or no, like you connect to OpenVPN. This is probably solid, but these are some of the challenges I always had. Connect to OpenVPN, I'm connected to all day. I come home and then I'm still connected to OpenVPN, but I'm connected to my own network and everything freaks out. And so WireGuard handles that actually kind of gracefully. I'm sure OpenVPN does too, but it's always been a pain for me. <laughs> Uh, Homelab New, I love TailScale. I used to be conceptually against it since I didn't want some inscrutable control plane able to allow my network access to my environment, but now I have so many other controls, I don't see it as a major problem. I I know what you mean. Like, like uh, you hold on to these, to these values at first, you know, until you need some kind of functionality, and that functionality may come with some perceived, uh, you know, um, some perceived downsides or cons and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to do that. And then eventually you want that functionality enough. You accept what you perceive as a risk and then it's just floodgates. You're like, okay, well, I let that one thing happen. So I'll let this other thing happen too. It's kind of like that too. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Anytime I open up ports or something or, or, or ports or firewalls or create tunnels or reverse tunnels, I, 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 I play that same game in my head all the time. And start justifying well i did it on this one case i think this one's okay but um at some point you just got to trust the tech and trust the company you know and uh it's about all you can do well you can still <laughs> you can still be on the defensive too just in case uh djt uh thanks for follow appreciate it and uh cataclysm i think that's it thanks for follow appreciate it too i i don't think i called that one out but thank you thank you thank you all so much um let's see Alfie Tross, uh, UDM Pro just started constantly pinging Facebook, Google, and Twitter, and no way to turn it off. After the most recent update, other threads I found online indicate that the function ignores user-defined DNS settings. Pretty terrible move, in my opinion. What do you think? I haven't noticed this at all. I have to run uh, Trace and capture some packets. I haven't noticed it at all. Uh, I don't know why they would be pinging it either way. Uh, maybe... Um, uh, okay, so uh, I guess I could see how they would, not why. Um, maybe that's their uptime check to see if you're able to connect to their services. I don't know. You know, some, some, yeah, which, which kind of stinks because then it's like, okay, well, Facebook, Google, and whoever they're pinging know that, you know, hey, that um, this machine exists on the network. I'll have to look into it. I, I don't know anything about it. I'll have to look into it. Um, I'm on the... I'm on like the earliest of early releases only because like I get a lot of features faster. So I, I don't know if that's if you're on like a stable release or if you're on like the release candidate like I am. Uh, but I'll have to check it out. I'll have to look at the, I'll have to look at the, the release notes too because a lot of people, <laughs> their release notes are great because, you know, you get like 100 people saying it works and then you get like five or 10 people with all the problems I mean, like 10 minutes after they release firmware. So it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, at least the people that report stuff in their community. It's really fast. Claude B, how do we speak a question? Just like that. You just did. Uh, let's see. Sigor, uh, got to run and catch the replay. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, for, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, Round, Round Becker, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Um, Round, it's an open source alternative to Heroku. Pretty neat. I uh, didn't see the link. Because links aren't allowed, but I think I know what you're talking about because I've seen it. <laughs> uh, allows you to easily provision, I think, resources just like Heroku, but self-hosted. So yeah, pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, PC Geek Zoe25 is talking about passes, passing services outside the cluster through traffic. So if that's the case, because uh, that's not what was said. If that's the case, it's as simple as creating what I was talking about earlier. Uh, a route or an ingress route that points to a service that then points to an IP. And I have examples of that if I if I don't ping me for an example and uh, I'll remember to get one in my launchpad repo. Uh, Claude, uh, how do you manage the problem of updates with containers? Uh, when there is a PHP flaw, for example, it's easy to patch the whole system, but a container is complicated, sometimes never updated. Sometimes you have to recreate each container, etc. Yeah, good question. Uh, I do all the time. How much time you got? <laughs> no. So I, I, I use, uh, if, if, you, if you've been following my Kubernetes cluster at all, I use Flux now. So my whole entire Kubernetes cluster is defined in Flux. The nice part about defining it anywhere, it doesn't have to be with Flux, but design, defining it in source control is that each deployment you have or each Kubernetes resource points to a Docker image, right? It'll say PHP 
version 7.01, making the numbers up doesn't matter. But that image then uh, is defined in that manifest. Then on top of that, I use something called renovate bot that I run in my Kubernetes cluster and renovate bot is a dependency checker. And it can also look up uh, known vulnerabilities uh, in those containers. It's not to say that it, it I, I won't go too far because you can do a lot of stuff. Well, I'll just keep it there. So it will look at, uh, I have it scheduled hourly to, to look at my repo, scan every single one of my Kubernetes resources and say, hey, is there an update? Is there an update? Is there an update? If there is an update, it will open a pull request on my repo and I get to approve it. Now that's not exactly the security piece that helps me keep them up to date, but you would hope that most things are resolved in newer versions of those containers. That thing, Trivi, that I also use can also scan um, any kind of dependency you want, whether it's node modules or Python or anything, and can also scan that container itself when it's built at the file level. So during build time, after you build your container, you can then use Trivi to scan that whole container and look for any vulnerability uh, that's a binary that's inside of that container, which is really cool. Then <laughs> on top of that, Trivi can also go out and scan containers that are running during runtime. So a combination of all those three things, you can you can find out really quickly uh, which which containers have vulnerabilities that need to be patched, either at rest in manifest, at rest in your container repos in the container registries, or during runtime in your Kubernetes cluster. So <laughs> that's how I address it. And it's uh, it's kind of complicated, um, but it's it's fantastic. And I do all three of those things. And I, I, I have something coming on it soon. Uh, I'll primarily focus on probably the Kubernetes piece, but it, it's awesome. So a combination of keeping your manifest in a repo so you know where they are and one so you can repeat it but two so you can scan them with trivi awesome and then keeping them in a container registry uh whether they be yours or theirs if you're just using theirs totally fine too hopefully they'll patch them um, but if you want to pull them down and store them in your own then you can scan your own independently of theirs and then uh three you can scan them at runtime in Kubernetes and look for those uh, vulnerabilities too. So it's pretty awesome. Like Trivi is is really awesome. And a combination of Trivi and Renovate Bot has, has totally accelerated uh, my, my, one, my cluster, but two, my ability to patch stuff. Because now I'm not going out and searching for updates. I don't search for updates anymore. I let Trivi tell me there's updates. Like I just approved three this morning. I had an update for what I have an update for my own container that's in that's in uh, GitHub, my my little link server. I patched some stuff yesterday. Trivi says, "Hey, we found a new version. Do you want to do it?" I said, "Yes, approve." Boom, I approve it. Flux says, "Hey, there's a change." Flux applies that to my environment, pulls down the latest container. I'm on the latest container, and it does that for every single thing that I have. I don't have to go and look for traffic updates. I don't have to go and look for node updates. I don't have to look for any container updates at all. I don't have to look at them. I don't, I don't have to look. Renovate bot goes and finds them and then uh, I patch them that way. That's on that's on like kind of, you know, just release and software release cycle stuff. But then Trivi will go and scan those containers when they're built too. So pretty awesome. I, I have a pretty good flow right now. Maybe I should do some more content around that. I, it's just pretty, it's pretty far down the rabbit hole and I'm never, it's hard to gauge the appetite for that type of stuff. The only gauge I have for that type of stuff is views on the last video. And so, you know, I, I try, I always try to make sure that my current audience is, you know, interested, engaged in what I release. And some of those videos don't do too well. Doesn't mean I won't do them in the future, but you know, <laughs> I got to focus on uh, keeping, keeping existing people happy though, too. But anyways, yeah, great topic. I should have more on this stuff and maybe a live stream on it. Cause it's, uh, I, I love doing it. I love doing it. It's so fun. And it's uh, greatly improved. Like I, uh, my, my whole entire Dev, DevOps process and workflow. I, again, don't search for updates anymore. Like I used to have a Saturday morning patch day, which, which I do still for operating uh, system level patches, but I would also include in their container patches too. During my, my upgrade of all of my operating systems, I would go out, I had every single container I used bookmarked, bookmarked. 
and I go and compare, go and compare, go and compare. Oh, traffic has an update. I should update that. Oh, Portainer has an update. I should update that. Oh, Node has an update. I should update that. You know, uh, you name it, you name it. Uh, Uptime Kuma, all the stuff. And uh, Uptime Kuma, Schlink, uh, yeah, all the stuff I use, I would have to compare. And now it's, I let Renovate uh, open up a PR for me and I'm like, boom, approve, approve, approve. And within five minutes, my cluster has already applied those updates. So it's it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome stuff, but it's pretty far down the rabbit hole. But Claude, yeah, yeah, great question. Hey, goodbye, goodbye, Pavely. Pavely, there's a lot of a lot going on there. I'm just saying goodbye, Pavel, Pavely. <laughs> I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I apologize. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. DJ, if I didn't call that one out, DJT, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And Evo, Evo, thanks for the uh, uh, follow. Appreciate it uh why would you want to do that ssl up uh, i think you guys are uh if uh i think you guys are figuring something else out uh okay using nginx or traffic in my cluster to serve traffic outside the cluster for example docker host yeah so i have an example on this you basically create a service it's it's basically like a headless service depends on what version of kubernetes you're using they've kind of changed it you are either create an api endpoint or a web endpoint or a headless service and you point it at that so if you need an example Yes, send me one for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, tagged you in Discord with my triple monitor setup. I'll check it out. Uh, Southpaw. Hey, Southpaw. Dude, how's it going, man? This is way, way. Dude, we're going way back, man. <laughs> we're going way back. Haven't seen you in a long time. I've been off Twitch for a while and come back and your stream looks sick now. <laughs> Thanks, man. So Southpaw, uh, great dude. Uh, when I used to stream games, Southpaw was another person that... Uh, He'd hop in my stream and then hop in his stream. So I hope you're doing well, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Just got to your comment. I hope you're still around, but man, good to see you. I haven't heard that name in a while. Uh, Mini Pie Gaming, I've been finding uh, it difficult to learn Linux in depth along with Docker as well as other utilities, mainly because I don't know what to do with it once I get it up and running. Anyone have any ideas? Um, yeah, it just depends. Like learning Linux in depth. Um, hey, Deep Panesso, resub, tier one, 20 months, 20 months drink. Hey, Tim, Deep Panesso, thank you so much. Thanks, 20 months, let's go, almost two years. Uh, Mini Pie Gaming, um, you know, this is a tough one. You, like, you want to learn Linux in depth. Um, I, For me, at least, the way to learn Linux in depth isn't by saying, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. Step four, do this, and like dive deep into it. For me, it's more about like um, uh, creating some kind of task or project around what you want to do and then doing it. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'll compare it to learning like a programming language. Um, when I first got into software development and programming, I thought I'll read the book on C Sharp and I'll learn all about like C Sharp and I'll learn all about like just everything, you know, whatever, what, you name it, classes, interfaces, uh, static functions, all, the, all this stuff. And then I found like, you know, after about three or four days, I'm like, I just want to start programming stuff and then I'll learn that way. And for me, that that was the way I learned best was by doing it. And so this might be the same thing with Linux. Like, you know, there might be some things you learn uh, in a book that you may never do. And there might be some things that you learn by doing it with a project that the book might not teach you. So I would just say dive in. I would say dive in, pick a project, dive in, and see it to completion and then you'll learn lots you'll learn lots because you'll you'll run into things you don't understand you'll run into things that don't work and so while a book might guide you through step by step you know intro to linux you know doing it and having hands-on experience will teach you things that you might learn in the last chapter you might learn in the second chapter you might learn any maybe not even in that book altogether so i, I would say go that route because that's the most real world thing you're going to do unless you're becoming a professor or an author on Linux, you know, that's the most real world experience that you can get is by uh, someone handing you a task and you completing that task. Um, you know, that's what you'll, that's what work is, <laughs> you know? And so I think you'll, you'll learn a lot that way. At least I do. Uh, at least I do. Uh, 151. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, just try to, yeah, here we go, Claude. Just try to host WordPress, SSH, and VPN to manage. It's a good start. Yeah, great. Great suggestions. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Pick pick a project, uh, see it to completion, and then figure it out and make it work. Make it work, as Tim Gunn says. Make it work. <laughs> and then you'll learn so much. 
Uh, Luenta, uh, hey Tim, uh, tell me, how are you this energetic every time I see you? I don't, I don't know. Something about the lights, uh, you know, uh, bubbly helps. Well, you know, it's bubbly water, not anything fancy. I, I don't know. I, I, I just Saturdays are my time to kind of, yeah, be, be with everyone here and talk about tech. I, I keep all this in all week. I don't get to talk about this stuff that much. You know, I, I talk about it in Discord, but it, it's a lot different, like vocalizing it, so... Well, thank you. Um, I don't even remember. I, what else did you say? Um, family man, watching your vids every time I start something. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to cover everything. Yeah, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. Thanks for thanks for stopping in. All right, guys. I, I know I've gone a little bit over. We're right about uh, four nineteen, so almost four twenty. Uh, I'm gonna look for mentions uh, specifically to make sure I'm not uh, skipping over things that people are saying. It's kind of hard to track them, but I'll see here. Hey, how's it going, man? I can finally catch your stream. Akamani, thanks so much. Thank you. Oh, here's one about earlier. Moin means hi, hello, good morning, good night, and everything in between as long as it's used to greet people. It's mainly used in northern Germany. All right, moin. I like it, moin. Hopefully I'm saying it right, because I, I was thinking it's morning. <laughs> Got to get your jaw, too. Morning. <laughs> moin, I like it, I like it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. I, I know very little German. I think in, like, uh, middle school, I we got to take we took four languages in middle school and i remember uh wie geht's uh wie geht's heute wie ist das wetter um viel glück and uh liste listo i think that means read the list because i think our german teacher would tell us that all the time liste listo <laughs> oh oh and uh what a what a uh es ist windig es ist windig means it is windy no that's about <laughs> the only german i remember from from middle school german that was a while ago too so uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm going to look for a mention specifically because I need to wrap up. Uh, I was inspired of the K3S Ansible role and created another role for external NCD member client certificates per provision through HashiCorp. Awesome. Awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yeah, if, uh, if, if, yeah, point me to the fork. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. All right. All right. Uh, Home Lab New. Uh, thoughts on the downturn uh, in the tech market, hiring market also. <laughs> when's tim con <laughs> yeah this one's tough uh it, it is tough uh you know tech has has had a great ride for about 20 years um you know and we're starting to see that maybe it might not be so great in the future you know hiring changes uh more rounds for hiring uh more uh they're looking for either more experience or the right candidate whereas before it was you know they were you know all of tech was recruiting because there just weren't enough people now with possibly the downturn in the economy and tech that they might be stopping some of the hiring. I mean, this is all speculation, right? This is all speculation. I, I haven't seen it yet. I mean, besides downturn in some of the economy, but it's all speculation. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, Tesla's already said it's happening. And, you know, I think some other tech companies are taking their lead too. And obviously they're, they're, they're well tapped into what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's tough. Um, you know, if you, if you, I, my only advice is just to keep your skills sharp, keep your eyes open, uh, keep your head up. You know, I mean, that's all I can do. I think, uh, that's all we all can do <laughs> really. Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Cause it is tough. When's Tim Khan? I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel, I feel weird if it was a real Tim Khan, but maybe, maybe something. I, I think in discord before someone had mentioned, Hey, if there's a, the large, you know, um, conference that a lot of people are going to maybe we could do a meetup there too i'm open to that i'm open to that i'm not i'm not great at organizing events but i, I would figure something out but if if there is something where a lot of people were attending a specific event then yeah heck or if i was attending an event anyway i would i would throw it out there in discord and say hey i'm i'm going to be attending this event let's meet up some night i would i would 100 love to meet people for sure because I, I see your faces on discord I see your your avatars in Discord. And, uh, yeah, I would love to meet people for sure. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I'm all right. I'm gonna look for mentions because I now I'm way over. N now way over. Uh, Apershar, great. <laughs> Some great German skills. No, no, Apershar, no, no way. Not good at all. <laughs> oh, here, here, here. Oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna. Try. <laughs> Crack kitty. I am a jelly donut. Hopefully that's not what I said. Hopefully that's not what I said. I remember wie ist das Wetter, uh, es ist windig, and uh, uh, listo, listo. That's that's about it. And wie Gluck and wie geht's and those kind of things. But uh, wie geht's heute? <laughs> moin. I remember moin. <laughs> For sure. 
All right, guys. Uh, looks like I'm looks looks like I'm all caught up. There's a lot of German flowing in now. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's all you know within the TOS. So be be good. <laughs> oh, I'm a jelly donut. Is ich ich bin ein Berner? Uh, ich bin ein Berner. That's what I'm going with. I am a jelly donut. I like it. Uh, we'll end with that. Hey, guys. Thank you all so much for joining in today. Thank you so much. There were follows. There were bits. There were subs. There were resubs. Thank you so much for all that. I greatly appreciate it. It's super awesome. I think earlier that people asked, how are you so energetic? It's because of all of you. Uh, if if there was no one in here and nothing going on, I, I probably wouldn't be as energetic. So I, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, like I mentioned, I'm going to be hopping into voice chat. Let's see what channel in voice chat uh, people are in. People are in Azeroth. So I'm probably going to hop in Azeroth. I just need about a three-minute bio break, and I'm going to hop in there. If you're not in Discord already, you should totally join our Discord. Um Totally fine if you just join and lurk and never say a thing. Totally fine. Uh, there's a lot of great people in there who are really smart in a lot of different areas. I know a little bit about a lot, but collectively we know a lot about a lot in our Discord community. And it's it's really awesome. Over 7,000 members now. Discord believes in us because they gave us a partner badge, uh, recently partnered. So that's awesome too. Uh, you should totally join. Uh, there's categories for almost everyone there. And if you find that there's not a category there for you, we'll create one if there's enough demand for it or there's always random <laughs> too. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I will be back next Saturday. Hopefully uh, I have a guest lined up. We'll see. I'll let you know on Twitter or Discord and, um, and uh, I'll have something out for you this week on YouTube for sure. So, hey, have a great Saturday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and be good to each other. Take care, folks.